Now that we understand how our EVAP system works, by taking fuel vapors from the tank, storing them in our charcoal canister, and then rerouting them into our intake manifold to be burned by the engine. Now, let's talk about the EVAP system's common failures and some of the symptoms you may experience. Let's start by talking about the purge solenoid. Now the purge solenoid can fail in one of two ways, either electrically or mechanically. Remember the purge is normally closed. So if it fails electrically, then the engine computer won't be able to open it when it comes time to purge the canister. So electrically, your purge will be stuck closed. With a stuck closed purge solenoid, you won't notice any drivability issues. Your car will still start, run, drive as it always has, but you may notice a fuel smell. Remember the purge is designed to open to allow fuel vapors that are collected in the charcoal canister to be routed into the intake manifold that purges or cleans out the charcoal canister. If our purge is stuck closed, the canister will just continue to saturate with fuel vapors. Eventually it'll saturate so much that it can no longer collect fuel vapors. Therefore, when you fill up or during the expansion of the tank, those fuel vapors won't be able to be collected in the charcoal canister and they'll go out the vent valve. When they go out the vent valve, you'll be able to smell that fuel vapor. So that's one failure, an electrical failure, preventing it from opening and preventing the canister from being purged. The other way is a mechanical failure. Now a mechanical failure can uh, keep it closed, prevent it from opening, but most of the time a purge will be stuck open. Now stuck open purge can cause two main issues. One is after you finish filling up your tank with gas at the gas station, you may notice once you start it up that it'll run really rough or maybe start and then die. But after a little while, it'll clear itself up and then you'll be off running like normal again. So just after a fill up event, you'll notice a rough running engine. So that's symptom number one. Symptom number two is you could get a check engine light on for a lean code. I'm gonna use this diagram to illustrate both these symptoms. This is a diagram from a Chevy workshop manual. We fill up our tank from here. As we fill up with fuel, our vapors are pushed into our evap line down into our charcoal canister. Now our canister's charcoal will collect our vapor, and by the time it reaches our vent solenoid, our vapor has been collected and we get a fresher air in our outlet. But let's erase that. Let's say our purge is stuck, partially open. Some of those vapors will make their way into our purge line. And depending on how low our fuel tank was before filling it up, that could be a lot of vapor being pushed towards our intake manifold. The next time we start our vehicle, all that vapor, because our purge is open, will be sucked into the intake manifold. This will introduce excess fuel vapors that the engine was not accounting for. Therefore, the vehicle will run rich. That is the cause of the rough running engine after a fill up if our purge is stuck partially open. Eventually though, all the vapors will be sucked out of the charcoal canister, fresh air will be drawn into our vent, and then it'll be just fresh air going in and the engine will run good once again, once that rich condition is taken care of. Now, what about our lean condition? If our purge is stuck open, it will constantly be drawing fresh air from the vent into our intake manifold. This fresh air is unaccounted for by the engine computer. The engine computer utilizes either a MAP sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor, or a mass airflow sensor to calculate how much air is entering into the intake manifold. But this air is not being monitored by the MAP or the mass airflow sensor, it's entering in through a back door. So the engine computer is not accounting for that extra air. Therefore, we get a lean condition. It's possible that that lean condition can cause drivability issues or just a check engine light, depending on how bad our purge solenoid is. Let's move on to the vent valve. The vent valve also can fail in two ways, electrically or mechanically. Now remember the vent valve is normally left open that allows a free flow of air to come in and out of the fuel tank. The engine computer closes the vent valve during a self-diagnostic test. It closes off the whole system and checks the fuel tank pressure sensor for changes in either pressure or vacuum. And that'll let it know if it has a leak or a restriction or a blockage of some kind. It closes or seals off the whole system. So if electrically 
the computer cannot close the vent valve, then you'll have a check engine light on, most likely for a large leak. Now, drivability issue, not a problem. Drive around all day long, you won't even notice when this happens other than the, the check engine light. Now, mechanically, the vent valve could be stuck shut. Now, if this happens, the biggest thing you'll notice is during a fill up event, you're at the gas station, you go to fill up and it clicks off constantly as you're trying to fill up the tank. That's because, remember the purge is stuck closed? Now the vent is mechanically stuck closed. There's nowhere to relieve pressure. So as you're filling up the tank, the pressure builds inside the tank because it can't be released. And so the fuel nozzle just shuts off. Then you squeeze the handle again, and then it clicks off immediately once again. That is a symptom of a stuck shut or a blocked vent valve. Other than that, you won't notice any other drivability symptoms. Driving around all day long, you won't feel a difference in how your engine drives, only at the pump. So now let's talk about the Bruce canister. The most common failure of the charcoal canister is it becoming clogged when fine dust particles enter into it from the vent. This will create a restriction, preventing a free flow of air from the tank out or from the vent back in. Again, you may only notice this at the pump when you go to fill up because there's that restriction, that lack of airflow, you may notice the fuel shutting off a number of times during a fueling vent. Other than that, most likely you will not notice a clogged charcoal canister, except you may get some sort of check engine light on saying that there's a flow issue within the system. Our next failure is in the fuel tank pressure sensor. This can also fail in one of two ways, either electrically or mechanically. And regardless of which one it is, it can send false information to the engine computer. This won't cause any drivability issues. Drive the car all day long. You won't notice any symptoms, but you may get a check engine light on for a problem that really doesn't exist. Remember, the engine computer uses the fuel tank pressure sensor to monitor the EVAP system. During a self-diagnostic test, it'll close off the vent it might open the purge that will create a vacuum in the system because once the purge is open now the intake manifold will draw a vacuum in the system because the vent is closed and then it'll close the purge that vacuum should hold for an extended period of time unless there's a leak in the system if there's a leak in the system that vacuum will eventually release and the fuel tank pressure sensor will go from a vacuum back to atmospheric pressure but if there is no leak in the system that vacuum will hold and that fuel tank pressure sensor will show that it's in a vacuum. If there is an issue with that fuel tank pressure sensor and it will not change from its current value to show that it is in a vacuum, it's just stuck in its position, the engine computer will be trying to create a vacuum by closing the vent, opening the purge, and maybe there is a real vacuum there, but the fuel tank pressure sensor does not detect it. Therefore, it will flag a large leak thinking that, hey, there must be a leak preventing a vacuum. But in reality, it's the fuel tank pressure sensor that has failed. Now, there are ways to test the fuel tank pressure sensor to make sure that it is reading accurately and not giving a false code. We'll get more in depth with that in a future video. But no symptoms, check engine light. Our last failure point is an actual leak. If one of the lines or hoses to the EVAP system gets a hole in it, a crack in it, a split of some kind, or if one of the O-rings around the vent valve, the fuel tank pressure sensor, or one of the line connections, or your fuel tank gas cap, if that's not sealing properly, it will show up as a leak in the system. Out of all the possible EVAP system failures, having an actual leak in the system is the hardest to pinpoint. It requires a special smoke machine to fill up, to pressurize the system, and then look for where that smoke is coming out. And sometimes the hole is so small, even the slightest breeze can blow that smoke away and it can be very challenging to detect. So these are the possible ways that your EVAP system can fail and some of the symptoms you may experience. In our next couple of videos, we're gonna be taking each component the purge solenoid, the vent valve, the fuel tank pressure sensor, the canister, and break down each one. How does the engine computer utilize it? How does it fail more specifically? How do we test it? How do we pinpoint it? So we can get our cars back on the road. I'm Robert, your host, and this is Facts.